Suppose you want to distribute an object evenly around a circle. What is the easiest way to do this in Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer? Let's have a look. I have this symbol which I want to distribute 12 times around the circle. Let's start by duplicating the symbol either by using the context menu in the layers panel or using the shortcut key command J or control J on Windows. Once I have my copy, I will reposition it and hide the original. I will need 11 more copies which I will need to rotate evenly around the circle center. While the select or move tool is active and our object is selected, we need to turn on the enable transform origin. This will enable a small crosshair in our object and by default it is on the center of our object. I can now move this to the center of the circle. Make sure you have snapping turned on, otherwise it will be almost impossible to find the center of the circle. Perfect. Now the center of the circle will be the reference or the origin of any transformation we are going to apply to this object. Let me duplicate the object by pressing command J and then apply the transformation we need. The duplicate action move the object as it remembered the last transformation applied on the object it was duplicated from. This is called power duplicate and it will be exactly what we are going to use in a minute. But first let me reposition it back to the starting position. On this duplicate, I'm going to apply the rotation transformation using the transform panel. If the transform panel is not visible in your setup, enable it from the window menu. In the R, which stands for rotation, I can now type in 360 divided by 12 as I want 12 copies around the circle. Awesome, it rotated the correct angle we needed. We can now use the power duplicate by pressing command J 10 more times. Our symbol is now evenly distributed around the circle. I can select the symbols and press command G to group them. This will allow me to rotate them if needed if I want to change their position or angle. Now, how about if we want each symbol to fit perfectly without any gaps in between? For this, we are going to need some math. If we don't want any gaps in between, we need to make sure that the total width of all the combined symbols should be equal to the circumference of the circle. The circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times the radius or pi times the diameter, which you might remember from your math class. In this case, the diameter of our circle is our width or height, which is 600. So using a calculator and the formula, we can easily calculate that the circumference will be 1885.9 something. Suppose I want 40 copies around the circle, which means I need to divide this number with 40 and the result should be the width of our object if we don't want any gaps in between them. I will select my object and make sure that the width and the height are linked. So when I change one of them, the other value will adjust automatically. In the width, I can type in the value we calculated earlier, which was 47.12. Here is a tip for you. You don't need a calculator. You can just type in the formula 600 times pi divided by 40 directly in the width field and Affinity will calculate it for you. The next steps are exactly the same as before. I move the transform origin to the center of the circle, make a copy of the object and apply the rotation. But this time it will be 360 divided by 40 as I wanted 40 objects around the circle. Let's zoom in to get a closer look. That looks about perfect. Now we can keep duplicating with the command J until the circle is covered. If I zoom in again to view the final result, as expected, it is a perfect result. Awesome! And this is how we perfectly distribute an object around a circle. There is one other method which I'm not sure if it works on Windows, but we can make use of the inline graphics in text functionality. I did a video on this a time ago and here is a quick refresher. First, we need a copy of the circle by duplicating it with command J. 
This will be the base for our text on the path. Next, we need to set our desired object size. Once we have our desired size, I can copy it to the clipboard. We can now select the text tool and we also need to make sure that the circle is selected in the layers panel. If I now move close to the circle, the text tool cursor changes into a text on path icon. When this icon is shown and I click on it, the circle will become the path the text will follow. Instead of entering text, we can now paste the copied object by pressing Command V. As you see, this pastes our object as inline text. Pretty cool. I keep pressing Command V until we have enough objects to cover the circle. The text with the objects is now on the inside. However, by pressing the reverse text path, we can easily correct this. The last symbol overlaps the first symbol. To fix that, I can press Command A to select all the symbols and open up the character panel. It can be found under the Windows Text menu. If we modify the in-between character value, we can adjust it in a way that our last character, or symbol in this case, has the same amount of space with the rest of the characters. Nice! Let's turn on the original circle. Notice how the symbols are not aligned correctly which in my opinion does not make any sense. It could be a bug, I have no idea. However, we can try to fix that by selecting the text with the symbols layer and slightly move it until it's centered with the circle. As you might have guessed, this hack I just showed is not a perfect solution, but could be very useful if you want to do a quick mock-up or want to experiment with your design. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, thank you for watching. Until the next video.